welcome. So today we're going to be doing something slightly different than what I would normally do. Um, this is a situation that I never thought that I would speak of, never even cross my mind. But for Christmas, I had asked my husband to get me an ancestry DNA test. Um, I was pretty excited. I really wanted to know about my dad's side of the family and where his side of the family came from. I unfortunately wasn't able to ask him prior to him passing away. And majority of the DNA tests that I have found in my research, I found that if you're a male, you carry your father's gene that they do the testing on. However, if you're a female, and you're wanting to know your father's side of the family, you would have to have a family member like your father, grandfather, uncle, someone around that line. Unfortunately, I didn't want to go the brother out because I wasn't sure if he financially had the money to get a test and, um, you know, I wasn't, um, and I settled with that. So I continued my research and found that on Ancestry, you can do the Ancestry DNA test and regardless of it, whether you're a female or a male, they can test for both sides of your family. So I didn't need to have, you know, someone from my dad's side also get a test. What they test is different than what the other test tests for. So long story short, as I'm waiting for my DNA test to come back, I was talking to my brother. I was like, you know, I'm really excited. I can't wait to see what our DNA test comes back as. Um, and then I say our DNA test comes back as because my brother was quite curious as well. And at that time, he had not done a DNA test. Um, so while I was waiting for my results, I had actually met um, someone on Ancestry that would be a distant relative of mine and he kind of seemed hesitant on telling me too much. He was wanting more, it seemed like, to wait until my DNA test came back showing that I was indeed related, which I thought that was kind of odd. Um, so needless to say, my DNA test came back and I was like, oh, see, I am related to you, and I was showing my brother the DNA results. And I was like, you know, you should do one, you know. Being that we're siblings, that doesn't necessarily mean our DNA is 100%. You know, it can have variations depending on what genes you got from your mother and what genes you got from your father. So my brother, sitting here on my couch, listening to me tell him about my DNA results and how ecstatic I am and... You know, now I can tell this gentleman that is also a family member of ours, see, I took the test and I am related. My brother decided right then and there, he was going to go ahead and get an Ancestry DNA test. Well, we're waiting and finally his test results come back and he tells me to look at his results. And... At first, I didn't understand why. You know, I understood, you know, just the concern that he had when he was asking me to log on to his account and look at his results. It just didn't seem like a, yay, yippee, you know, look at mine, let's compare. Um, and strangely enough, it had also shown that we were our first cousins. Now, with Ancestry, the way that they do their relationships is all first cousin, second cousin, third cousin. Um, and so I wasn't too concerned on that. However, I started looking at my brother's matches and I quickly realized that we had the same matches when it came to my mother's side of the family. Excuse me. However, when it came to my dad's side of the family, I didn't see any of the relatives that I had on my ancestry test for his relatives. 
And so I did a little bit of research and you can actually, uh, you know, log on to your profile, go to your DNA family matches and click on whichever individual and you can see what matches you and this person that you selected have in common. So I did that with a few of my brother's family members that I knew I did not have online. And I did not show up as being a match for these individuals. Still at that point, it wasn't dawning on me what the truth was. And for all of our life, my brother and I were raised that we had the same mother and the same father. Um, my brother is named after my father. Um, you know, so it never dawned on us that there could be any possibility of anything other than my father being his father. So I thought maybe there's a glitch in the system. And so I contacted Ancestry because at this point, I'm really frazzled and I'm, you know, kind of scared at this point, you know, what does this mean? And I asked them first, you know, what it was meaning as far as our relationship. And she couldn't come out and just tell me, you know, based on looking at the results and say, well, based off of that, you guys are this relation or that relation. And I'm sure it has something to do with their policy. Um, their tests aren't 100%, so they can't 100% say this is it. Um, but it is, you know, pretty accurate. So she said that she would send me an email, and within that email, there would be some attachments that I'd find useful to me. The first attachment that I opened was explaining the relationship based off of the markers that they test. Um, on Ancestry, it will tell you guys have, you know, 1700 yada yada match. And so based off of our relation and what it said mine and my brother's match was, it actually came up that we were indeed half siblings. We were not full siblings, which is quite shocking. And I can only imagine how my brother felt. You know, my brother has carried the family name. He also named his son, you know, after our family. And I, I can't even begin to think. You know, my brother did tell me, he said, you know, I went to bed last night thinking my dad's my dad and I woke up in the morning to results showing me that someone else is my dad. It's just completely crazy. It's not anything that you would think. You know, here we are taking ancestry DNA tests to find out our heritage because our father isn't around to tell us. And we find out that there's been, you know, something that was swept under the rug and now it's brought to the light. In a sense, it is good. Um, you know, I feel medically, if anything were to happen to my brother or his son, you know, for medical purposes, it would be good to know what runs in his family so that if he were to get ill or my nephew were to get ill, they would be able to seek treatment and they would be able to tell the doctor, you know, what illnesses run in the family. Um, and at the same time, I'm thankful that this situation, this truth, didn't come to light until after my father had passed. Um, I don't think my father would have viewed anything differently, but I think he would have felt a certain type of way that my mother wasn't being honest. Um, you know, we did obviously first, you know, turn to our mom and ask, you know, why, you know, is there a possibility, you know, what exactly happened? And the unfortunate part is my mother suffers from schizophrenia and she does not take medication because she does not believe that there is anything wrong with her. She feels that there's something wrong with everyone else, which could be, you know, part of the disease. And she self-medicates with alcohol. And she's 
a severe alcoholic. Um, due to this, you know, I got put out for adoption when I was 10. Um, you know, there's, you know, so we couldn't really, I'll get into that whole life situation another time. Um, but you have to take everything she says with a grain of salt. And she told us, you know, at first there was no way. And we had to confront her and tell her these are the results. You know, we have different family members. If we were 100% siblings we would have the same family members not just the family on your side you know and once she realized that we weren't backing down and what we were saying had truth to it I think she realized maybe she should talk a little bit and she did say that there was a possibility of someone else however she did not think that was a possibility um, I don't know if that's truthful that she didn't know or not but that at least led us in the right direction after my brother did some digging he has a very good idea on who his biological father is unfortunately that gentleman passed away five months ago um, and so it's sad at the same time because had the truth been known I feel like my brother may have stood a chance at getting to know his biological father. But then, in the other hand, I feel like everything happens for a reason, and maybe everything happened the way it did for a reason. Um, which brings me to this video. I really am questioning a lot of things right now due to this discovery. One of the first things that I'm questioning is if there is more to life than just here on the physical world, does my father know the truth? I would really, really like some answers to that right there. And I would like to hear, you know, my father's take on this situation. Unfortunately, as I've said, my father has passed. Um, so I'm not able to talk to him, you know, in the normal sense. However, I've done some additional digging and I have purchased, it's called an S box. And I got this here from the ghost stop. And it's just this little box here. And with this, you're able to do a few, there's quite a few different things you can do with the S-Box. Um, you can scan the FM radio stations as well as the AM radio stations to try to get EVPs and you know, communicate with your loved ones that have passed on, as well as you're also able to use it as a recording device to, you know, ask your questions, play it back, and hopefully hear a response. Um, we're going to go ahead and do a spirit box session in the next video. I know this one's ran pretty long. And I'm hoping to communicate with my father to find out how he feels on this situation and to find out if he knows the truth or if he knew the truth all to, you know all along but you know never said anything. Um, just a lot of questions. So if you enjoy this segment, Please like, share, and subscribe, and please stay tuned to part two for our spirit box session. Thank you.